Ah, uh, yes, welcome to this Photoshop tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today, we're going to take a look at creating HDR images. So, I've got these three raw images, one taken for the midtones, one exposed to catch all of the highlights, make sure they're not overexposed, and the one that's definitely overexposed a little bit, um, so we can really get all the detail out of the shadows. We merge them together, and we get an HDR image. We're going to talk about how to do this with Photoshop. Now, there are a lot of great third-party uh, HDR editors. We're going to do this with Photoshop, and before we get going, I want to remind you guys this tutorial is sponsored by WP Engine. They've got the best WordPress hosting there is out there. Their servers are optimized for dealing with WordPress sites. Fast, stable, secure, all that good stuff. I trust them with tutvid.com. I've had tutvid.com on them for a number of years now and it's been great. Go check out tutvid.com slash WP hyphen engine. There's a link in the description. You can get a discount for going there. So here in file under automate we have this merge to HDR Pro. There is also that option over here in the Adobe Bridge if we go under Tools, Photoshop, Merge to HDR Pro. Um, for the sake of keeping it within Photoshop, I'm going to do it here from Photoshop though. So File, Automate, Merge to HDR Pro. And what I need to do is hit Browse and then choose the images. And when I choose them, they're all going to load into here. So you can see here up pops this, uh, this folder and I've got one DNG, two, three DNG files. I'm going to hit OK. And boom, 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 they all load right into there. We can take on attempt to automatically align the source images if we like. It takes just a touch longer to process them. That can be great if you're trying to handhold for an HDR, which is never really a good idea you should shoot these on a uh, on a tripod um, but you can go ahead and leave that ticked on I typically leave it checked on just because I don't know just because I do hit OK and Photoshop's gonna take a moment and process all these and open a different dialog box so here as you can see Photoshop's opened this dialog box it's a full screen dialog box um, we can zoom this in just a touch more if we like um, and what we're doing is we're creating a a very large image. In fact, we can over here under mode, we can even work with a 32-bit image, which has an incredible amount of depth. 16-bit um, already has a ton more processing power than 8-bit. I mean, like way more processing power and 32-bit is even astronomically higher than that. The reason we don't always go to 32-bit is because you're, you're limited as far as the things you can do with it in Photoshop. Um, there's some adjustment layers you just can't work with on a 32-bit image um, and things like that. I'm going to roll with 16-bit because 16-bit in this case is going to be more than enough for this image. So I'm going to leave it at 16-bit. Uh, you have some different options for uh, ways of tone mapping. Local adaptation generally I think is the best. That's what I'm going to work with. I like oftentimes to remove ghosts. Um, what that does is you get a lot of haloing around sharp edges where you go from like one color or one brightness sharply to another color or brightness, especially in HDR, it tends to be brought out and really very strong. In fact, you can see there's a whole edge glow option here in this dialog box. Um, so I like to keep, get rid of ghosts. I don't really want my HDR image to look like an HDR image. I think that's maybe... I don't want to say that, that that means it's bad HDR, it's just not really HDR that I like. And if you really take it to an extreme, right, where we have like a huge radius for edge glow and crazy strength, we start to just get this nasty like HDR vomity look. It just looks bad, right? I mean, there's so much you can do. It just looks bad. So I'm going to tone strength for the edge glow down. In fact, I'm going to tone the radius way down as well. I really don't want a lot of edge glow. Um, actually, let me bump radius up just a little bit. Um, I don't know, somewhere between 90 and 100 looks good for this particular image. Then we have our tone and detail options. So if you reduce gamma, you're actually going to, well, I mean, you can see it almost like adds this contrasty effect. If we increase gamma, it's going to sort of reduce contrast, which isn't necessarily a bad thing because we're bringing in a 16-bit image. We're bringing this image into Photoshop, which means we can apply contrast where we like it. And because we have 16 bits of depth and color to work with, we can really pull and extract a ton of data out of this image. And if we kick it up to a 32-bit image, well, I mean, it just gets even better from there. Exposure, obviously, is your brightness, right? So if you reduce exposure, it makes the image darker. If you increase exposure, it makes it a bit brighter. Um, if I increase exposure, the one thing that I'm just trying to keep an eye on is over here, the highlight areas of the image. You can see we're blowing that out right there. And not we can, we can pull a lot of that detail back with like a levels layer adjustment or curves layer adjustment. Um, but I don't really want to do that. I want to uh, make sure I've got a good handle on my exposure. So maybe an exposure of like 0 0.75 for this particular image. Image. Oh, by the way, these DNG files, there's a link in the description. You'll be able to download these um, and use and follow right along with this tutorial as well. I can increase detail and you're going to see what that does. It gives me kind of that HDR vomity sort of effect that I was talking about before, right? You really pump up that detail. It starts to look pretty funky. 
there are some cool usages for images like this, um, but just be careful, you know, and you can see now, now we just, now things are just ridiculous and obscene. Um, let's just undo that. But you can see how working with edge glow and detail, you can really just take that HDR effect way over the top. But on the flip side, like I just did, if you subtract details or, or set detail to the negative, you get this really um, artificial looking soft filter effect, which I don't think is that good either. So you got to find kind of a happy medium, uh, something that come kind of cuts right down the middle, is not like smack you in the face obvious, um, and just, you know, work with reducing the strength of your edge glow, increase the radius of the edge glow a little bit, and, you know, keep details down fairly low, and you'll typically get a pretty decent effect. I'm actually going to reduce gamma a little bit more. I don't want it to be, you know, completely devoid of contrast, but I'm really just, I'm watching this very bright spot on this building here. That's kind of my, uh, my barometer, if you will, for how low I'm taking the contrast or how high I'm taking the contrast. All right, then we have our advanced sliders. Uh, you can choose to work with the advanced sliders or the curve. I, personally, I prefer the curve because I know how to use it. If, you, if you're not comfortable using the curve, you can use the advanced sliders to th do things like boost your shadows um, or, you know, really darken up your shadows and make those shadows nice and solid. I usually don't do a ton of this here in this dialog box just because I know I'm going to be doing this in Photoshop. But if, for instance, you have like a stubborn highlight that you just can't get to, you know, work the way you want it to, you can bring all of your highlights down a little bit. And then you can go in and selectively add contrast in Photoshop with adjustment layers, masking, all that good stuff. Um, I don't want to boost the saturation by 20%. I want the saturation to stay where it is. In fact, if anything, I would end up reducing saturation a little bit. This image has a giant uh, or, a, or a heavy blue, bluish color cast because of the time of day it was shot. So I'm going to warm it up in Photoshop. But you can see here, we've created this this 16-bit HDR image in Photoshop. By the way, you can shut off any one of the images. I probably should have mentioned that, um, but I brought three in here. I want a sample from all three images. I want Photoshop to uh, build this HDR image from these images. Um, and you can see here I can you know select any of them and work with any of them. We're working with here with the middle one, which we've got selected. I'm going to hit OK. It's going to merge all three of them, tone map them in Photoshop. Oh, before I do that, you can save uh, a preset. And you can see there are a bunch of other presets that Photoshop comes with. Um, they're kind of hit or miss. I honestly don't really use them at all. Um, but you can go ahead. Whoop, I don't want to do that. And you save a preset just like that. And boom, you have your preset. This little flat menu, this has to do with the curves that you use. Um, but we're not going to mess with that right now. We can go ahead and hit OK. And it's going to begin the tone mapping process. And just, you can see, merge this to HDR. Create a .psd file in Photoshop. And give it a second. There we go. We have a, a PSD of our HDR image in Photoshop. And if we look at the layers, it's just one layer. It's been merged to one layer. If we go up here to image mode, it's a 16-bit image. Great. Um, over here in my other HDR image, I have some uh, adjustment layers. We're going to drag these over one at a time. I'm going to explain to you what I'm doing with them. I'm going to drag the first one over. And I'm just going to drop it in place. And this, as you can see, is just reducing the contrast a little bit more. The reason I'm doing that is because we're going to apply these two gradient maps that are going to change the color of the image a little bit. Um, and that's also going to introduce more contrast. So let's begin with the first one. You can see it's set to a blend mode of soft light. So I'm just going to drag that over and drop it in place. Cool. So we've added some more contrast back into the image. In fact, if I pump up the opacity of the layer, it does it even more. What I'm going to do maybe, there's a little bit too much green in the highlights with this sort of orangey color. So I'm going to move the color over this way to just desaturate it a little bit more, right? Knock out some of that uh, color cast, right? We're still warming the image up. All right, cool. Let's go with the uh, second gradient map here. Drag that over, drop it in place, cool. All right, so you can see we're, we're kind of getting a little bit of a, a warmed up effect. If I hold down my Alter Option key, select the eyeball of the background layer. There's the HDR image that we dragged in. Here we're beginning to kind of color adjust it a little bit. And last but not least, we have a curves adjustment that I'm just going to drop on top of the whole thing. This kind of... Um, just added a little bit of contrast. Actually, with, with the way we process this HDR, maybe does a little bit too much. It looks good uh, without it, but maybe I'll still use it as a darkening agent. If I set it to multiply and reduce the opacity uh, quite a bit, you can see there's before, there's after. So we're still introducing a little bit of contrast and darkening the overall image. And if you still think there's too much of one color or a color cast, you can either use curves or maybe the simpler way for you would be to just use the color balance adjustment layer um, and go, yeah, we'll go with mid-tones there's still a little bit too much green and yellow, I think, in these whites. So I'm just going to influence this with just a couple drips of magenta and a couple drips of blue. All right, so just, ooh, blue, that's a little bit too much blue. Maybe like one, 
And we'll also go here into the highlights, and I'm gonna do the same thing, just because those are brighter areas of the image. All right, so just a, just a couple little ticks. And it doesn't look like we did much, but you can see there's before, there's after. So it just really kind of balances out and gets rid of that kind of that hazy, greenish, um, funky looking color cast. So there's the HDR image we dragged in. There's the HDR image now. And this has allowed us to photograph this real estate property and get both the interior of the property as well as the out uh, the exterior of the property, excuse me, uh, all in one shot. And it, you can see it really doesn't take that long. I mean, we can go in and clean up these cords using clone stamp and things like that. Um, get rid of this little funky thing on the wall. Maybe a little bit of the, um, the adaptive wide angle to sort of correct some of the perspective uh, that's going on here. Maybe rotate and crop the image a little bit. But all things considered, the HDR feature has allowed us to get a great interior, exterior real estate photo. And you can use this for way more than just real estate, right? You can use this on uh, landscapes and, and even portraits I've seen it used on. There's all kinds of cool things you can do with HDR. But my advice about HDR would be use it carefully and don't allow yourself to just completely blow the doors off of your image with HDR. It may look cool for a second, but months and years down the road, you're going to really regret doing that. So for the somewhat deep merge to HDR pro function in Photoshop, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. NathanielDodsonTutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.